Welcome to the Feed Bandit Podcast, where we have fun talking all things hunting and in the process do our best to support small and family owned businesses in the hunting space. Here are your hosts and resident bandits, Jimmy Byrne and Richard Kinchlow. Howdy, folks, and welcome back to the Feed Bandit Podcast. Jimmy here, along with my co host, Richard. How are you, sir? Doing great, sir. Doing great. Good evening, everybody. Yes. Uh, well, on this episode, we're pleased to have joining us Freddie Estrada of Spintech Outdoor Products. Uh, Freddie is the Executive Operations Director. He's also part of the Spintech Outdoor Pro Staff. His role includes research and development of new products for Spintech, as well as setting up new partnerships nationwide to carry the Spintech line. You can find their company and products over at spintechfeeders.com. And we'll have a link to all their information and everything in the show notes page uh, at the end of the episode. So uh, thanks a lot for joining us, Freddie, on the Feed Bandit podcast. Welcome. How are you doing? Thank you. Well, thank you for having me, and I'm doing fine, doing good. Great, great. Did I get the, your your intro uh, correct there? <laughs> yes, sir. You're good. All right. Very good. Just want to make sure. Uh, yeah, so we just want to take – oh, Absolutely. Uh, we just want to take some time and uh, you know talk to you about what y'all do over at Spintech. Um, can you give our listeners an idea, just a high level right now, of what you guys are all about, and then we'll dive into some of the products sure. y'all have and things of that nature. Sure. Spintech. Spintech's been around. We're going on our 20 year anniversary. Uh, we we really cut our teeth um, on our mechanism because it, it it's, it's spring loaded and it shuts up and down, but it's on a spiral shaft that's really made us unique. Um, we were founded by a gentleman by the name of Anthony Myers. He's the president and CEO right now of Spintech. And it's it's a great line. I mean, the one thing I love about Spintech, because it was founded by hunters, it's run by hunters. I mean, all the staff loves the hunting and fishing industry. So it's a really, really, not only a diverse uh, place to work, but so many different personalities. And you meet all types of different people all over the, all over that. Well, now it's in the country because I just got back from Australia. Oh really? Well, wow, <laughs> that's great. And you guys are based out of uh, San Antonio, correct? Yes, sir. We are. Okay. Well, we'll have to talk about uh, Australia uh, a little bit later, but uh, yeah, let's. If you wouldn't mind, um, let's dive into what makes, I guess, you know, the mechanism so unique. Because you know, a lot of times uh, we're dealing with. Uh, you know, any number of different kinds of mechanisms, and we got issues with those. You know, sometimes there's clogging that happens, or sometimes there's, you know, ra- our mascot, the raccoon, gets in there and <laughs> goes in there and steals a lot of the feed, or, you know, whatever, any number of kind of issues you might have. Uh, what can you tell us about uh, what makes you guys unique? What makes us unique is, like I said, when Spintech was founded, it was because uh, Mr. Myers had gotten tired of, like what you just said, going into your store, going in and paying for another feeder, another unit because the raccoons, the varmints when they were just getting into that, to that feeder. He, he got tired of, got tired of dealing with that. He just saw his good money being thrown away. Like every other hunter probably sees nowadays. So he talked to a friend of his and a buddy, his buddy says, you know what? I got this great idea and I've just come up with this and, and and with your help, so they got together, they put their minds together, they tweaked it, and they came out with your, it, it's the Spintech mechanism. Um, and what the Spintech mechanism is, it's a standard, it's a standard uh, feeder mechanism. You can convert any existing feeder to a Spintech feeder with this mechanism. Hmm. It all goes on a six volt shaft, one eighth inch, and then your standard 12 volt shaft. The the mechanism is very unique because in, on the middle of the shaft, you notice standard traditional feeders or spreaders, they have a smooth shaft. So that's what enables the the squirrels where they were to spin them and turn them. And Spintech, you can't, because the shaft is a stainless steel spiral shaft. It it, it turns um, counterclockwise. And when it comes down, it comes down by the force of, you know, the the, the power of it bringing it down. And when it spins, it's, it's cool to watch because it comes down and then it snaps back and it locks up against the funnel. So it's kind of like or the right centrifugal force or something pulls it down yes. as it's spinning. And then... Exactly. The centri- that's what it is. The centrifugal force pulls it down. And again, I'm sorry if I'm kind of all over the place. I do no, this speech, okay. I feel like, all the time. <laughs> um, and it, it pulls it down. And the lovely thing about it is 
you don't lose your feed. Mm-hmm. You don't lose your seed. You don't lose fertilizer. You don't, there's so many things like when you're going, for, for instance, when you're going or you're going to feed down a Sendero or down a road, a lot of hunters always say, man, I put a, I just put a whole sack of corn in my road feeder. I haven't even moved but a couple of feet and it's gone. Well, that's because of course, when you're going down the road, your traditional spin plates, what happens is you're, they're spinning on their own without you turn them on and you're dropping corn or you're mm-hmm. dropping the seed or mm-hmm. any of those. So just like our feeders, they snap up shut and then guys love them. And that one mechanism has been, we've held the patent on that mechanism now for over 18 years. And wow. that one mechanism alone is just revolutionized the hunting industry. I like to say that our brand is known. It's known worldwide. We have a lot of people that have interest in this from you know overseas and people that are just finding out about the mechanism. But we've taken it up one level higher. This fall, I'm very excited to announce the first ever SpinTech inverted, inverted system. Hmm. Uh, we've taken that same mechanism. We've inverted it. We're now your motor your timer and your battery are inside your feeder. The only thing exposed is the little mechanism. Oh, that's and fantastic. it's still windproof and varmint proof. Yeah. And, and so we're, we're very proud and we're very happy and, 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 and our product, it, it's made such a difference. And I've been told by hunters all over the, all over the place, especially in South Texas and in Texas, they said, look, all I did was replace that little mechanism on my feeder and it cut my feed bill in half. Wow. I couldn't wow. believe it. it well, you know, you, you know, Freddie, what, what's you, you, you mentioned something, uh, and you know, one of these past cold fronts that we had at the, at the place that the, both Jimmy and I hunt, uh, we had a, we had a buddy out there and he was kind of going around checking feeders and he started noticing that at the, the bottom of our corn feeders, uh, they were just, they were just piles of corn and, and yeah. you know, and we thought to my, and we thought, well, wait a minute, you know, we got the, we got the varmint garden there with the chicken wire, which as you know, keeps the squirrels out and, yeah. you know, but, but then we realized it's not a varmint at all. It's the wind. And, 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 and <laughs> let wind. me, let me tell you folks, he's not lying when I, when he's talking about, about the wind and losing his corn, you know, we estimate we probably lost close to a sack of corn, uh, just from one nasty wind episode. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty crazy. And when it's yeah. your hard, and when it's your hard-earned money, and you you yeah. go out to your feeder, and that wind's been rocking, and say you get two bad episodes, you're what down a, a hundred pounds of corn on the floor. Yeah. Um. And yeah, I've been told that time and time again. We have our cages on. We have our chicken wire. We've done. Yeah. And I say, really, you know? And can you imagine having a feeder? You don't need those varmint cages no more. Yeah. The the the, the raccoons and the varmint they can't get into them. They're locked right. up so tight. Right. You know, and I always advise everybody, I said, when you first get that mechanism and you convert your feeder, I always suggest look at the gap between the poly nut and the, the both poly nuts and close it up about an eighth of an inch. Because all you're doing is you're closing it up just a little tighter. You're making that seal tighter. You're making it a little bit harder. It's already hard enough to get in. But I mean, there's so many pictures we get of people with squirrels. If you go on YouTube and you type spin tech feeders, You'll see a bunch of YouTube uh, videos of squirrels where they're hanging off the boxes and that <laughs> once, you know, or, or, you know, so we got squirrels, we have raccoons, we have, we've seen it all. I even had a picture sent to me the other day of a guy had black bears. I was black just about to ask. To get into, <laughs> they were just trying to get into his feeder. I was just like, about I to ask. Thing. I love yeah. it. <laughs> well, well, that, that is fantastic. Now, if you can just invent a way for them not to tump the whole damn thing over. <laughs> you know, and it's flip exactly, the barrel over. Exactly. You, you guys will really have something. You know, you you just have to, like I said, we're always in, especially the R and D department, especially the the pro the pro staff. We're always looking at different ways and looking at things. And a lot of people they put up those they put up those uh for those crank up feeders, those three hundred and fifty right. gallon barrel feeders. You know, and I wish you could find a way. It's like I tell you, but the best way that we've always done. <laughs> is just drive stakes by the feet and then you just put bailing wire and that just hope that you know they don't knock them over but when you were on a ranch in south texas it's about 3800 acres and we got about 18 feeders and 20 blinds and protein feeders where everything gets tested we've seen it all cattle yeah. hogs right. javelina coyotes 
I think sometimes the owner just throws stuff out there to see if they can really get enough feeders to go on. <laughs> right. <laughs> a challenge. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, you, you, you mentioned something just a few minutes ago, you know, the, the R&D. Um, and, and one of the things that, that I've seen, the uh, trending really the past couple of years has been the – uh, has been the low profile feeders, you know, AKA no more. I'm going to have to climb up a six foot ladder and, and hope I don't die emptying feed in there. Do, do you guys well, have a feeder like that? I'm glad you brought that up. Yes, we do. We actually spent tech and introduced their 500 pound low profile corn feeder and their 1000 pound low profile corn feeder. Mm-hmm. You can literally feed these from the ground. They That's come nice. up a little bit past my waist. And again, where they're using the traditional spin tech, everybody's the box, the box alone, no hogs bother, no varmints bother, nothing bothers them. And then now with the new inverted system that's coming out, I think we're going to revolutionize the feeder business one more time. Outstanding. Oh. Outstanding. Can, can you talk a little more about the inverted uh, mechanism and uh, the benefits oh, of having it that way as opposed to you know the traditional way? The inverted, the inverted, it's cut, it's cut, by the way, it's, it's the, it's the 12 volt digital inverted control unit that'll be available this fall. So just like you buy the regular 12 volt control system for your feeders, you'll be able to buy the 12 verted, the 12 volt inverted spin tech control units for your feeders. It'll have everything you need. It'll have your galvanized box that goes inside your feeder where you put your little timer, your battery. It'll have the cord where you can either mount on a low feeder or a quarter you can mount is on a big 1,000 pound, 2,000 pound feeder as well. Um, the benefits from the inverted is we have found out over the last four years of testing and then some, because they've been in test for a while, is the fact that the motor is inside the unit. The motor is not exposed to the element, to the humidity, to the, that, just the outdoor element. And then we have also found out just like the timer and the battery, when the, everything's enclosed within that feeder and it's protected and you just have your feed, it makes your life a lot easier. It really does. And especially on our low profile feeders, open them up. When you open them up, right right in front of you, you have everything right there and you're able to program everything real easy. But then the inverted mechanism is on the outside. That The only thing that's exposed is the spiral shaft and the mechanism. And that thing, it slings corn like there's no tomorrow. And it has spin tech technology. It snaps shut. The one thing wonderful about that mechanism is mechanism, the inverted, is we also have the patent, the new patent on that. So we we have tried to really keep stuff when we're researching it and coming up with these products and trying to really stay on top and keep it hush hush until we actually get all our patents out and then we, we introduce the product. Sure. Okay. And you said you've been, y'all been testing that for several years. Is that what you said? We've been, the inverted motor has actually, we were hard testing with it for four years. It's actually been in testing for the last eight and a half years. Wow. Okay. Well, then I'm sure it's, you've seen everything weather wise, you know, whatever wise <laughs> to, yeah, to prove and, it out. And we're proud. We're proud. And, and, and we're not knocking the spin tech technology because the traditional ones have worked wonderful. Everybody loves them. But now that we've gone to the – my road feeders, the road feeders were the first ones that we really put the inverted motors in two, two years ago. They did wonderful. The reason why the inverted uh, were inverted motors and mechanisms went very well on the road feeders is because your traditional road feeder kits, you know how they have the brackets, and they were external. So what would always happen? You're going down a road or you're getting ready to seed or something, and you hit a bump, your road feeder bump, you knock off your housing. Mm. With the inverted motor, you have better ground clearance. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So we, we solved a lot. We really thought hard and really have started to use it. And, and really, like I said, I'm very, very happy. It's it's the whole – we've had it in several of our road feeders. We've had it in one of our small small box feeder modular units, 300-pound units. But now that we're really starting to move into it, it's the product's going to be selling and really putting it in our heavy-duty units. We're very proud of it. Okay. Freddie, as far as your as far as your your line of feeders is concerned, I've spent quite a quite a bit of time on your website looking at kind of what you guys have. What what, what would you say is your most popular, uh, and and why? 
Right now, actually, I'm glad you asked. We have we, we watch those trends very closely. Our our number one, our top selling unit has been our 350 gallon crank up feeder, the 14 with the 14 foot legs, is because we have so many safety features again that are implemented in your traditional crank up feeder. Okay. Okay. Again, hunters, what are some of the problems that you've come up with on that on on that unit? Well, what happens when you're if if you're using the winch and it fails? Okay. What if you're not using a strong enough winch? So we kind of did an overkill. We didn't only put a winch that was 350 pounds max, 500 pounds max. We put a 1,200 pound breaking winch on that unit. <laughs> and the genius. And then we. Yeah, and then we also looked at the top of the head, the tripod head on that feeder. We said, what? okay, what do some of these guys, what do, we have, what do we have problems with in the past? Oh, if this fails, we always look at worst case scenario. If it fails, if it's not the winch, it's the cable. If the cable starts to break and the winch fails, what happens? If that loaded feeder can come down crashing, it can either kill someone or your feeder's destroyed. Mm -hmm. So at the very top of that winch head, if you see it, there's a little pulley. If that cable fails at any time and starts to come out real fast, that little pulley breaks over to the to the side. It locks that cable. That barrel doesn't come crashing down or it doesn't kill you in the process. Oh no, man, that's great. okay. That that <laughs> is fantastic. Now I did yeah. not I did not and I'm looking funny because as you're talking, I looked it up and yeah. That that is genius. So I, I will share with you that I we used to the place that we hunt. That's what we had. You know, we had these massive tripods with these things, and you know, it was you know, when you were teaching folks about hunting and all that. Like, okay, we got to go do feeder work, and you know, first of all, you get your arm all all you know stretched out because you're going to have to really crank it, and then you had to make sure that the new guy wasn't standing underneath the thing because it fell. He he or she was a dead man. Uh, well, so I, I, I I love the safety feature. Well, what's the other thing you would experience? What's the one thing I know you probably hated when you were cranking that winch? Well, the fact that me. it was the the fact that it was taken forever, and I feel like I wasn't getting anywhere. <laughs> okay, and then the other thing is you would always have to click a switch, right? Yep. So oh out, yes, and yes, and yes, yes. Yeah, ours there's some weight in there, that. and it starts falling and spinning. The ours, parts ours are spinning; you can't that. catch it's it. A, it's an automatic breaking winch. So it automatically locks and releases without any flip of any switch. Oh, Genius. Nice. Yeah, to pit, back in the day, you pinch your finger in that thing. Oh, or like you know, bust up work. your knuckles. Or... Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. So, so that's, our, that's our number one selling feeder, and it, had been our, it has been our number one selling feeder for the last 19 years. Wow. I'm very well at that feeder, and it's nothing – there's no everything's new the legs are new the barrel we have the barrels are 55 gallon barrels are specially made for our feeders now if you're a hunter you, you'll appreciate this because the feeder it says a lot of problems when if you're making a feeder or you just go and buy a traditional a 55 gallon drum just pick it up from somewhere and you think oh i'm with the corner it's going to be fine what people don't know is when you use a used barrel the acidic see from like tomatoes and fruits and whatever they put in it before you get it. That does not help the corn or when there's humidity. It won't flow. It sticks right. to the side. It causes issues. Our barrels are lined. They have, a, they have a secret coating in them. We have them manufactured, especially for deer feeders. So the, co the corn is constantly flowing. Interesting. Nice. Yeah, well, you, uh, so, you know, Richard and I, we've built some, and uh, some of those, <laughs> we found obviously some uh, moisture issues on some of them, and you could yeah, drill holes. It wasn't in our them. fault that it was ninety nine percent humidity. Well, I mean, come yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's fun building your own feeder, but I hear you on that. I mean, you might, you might as well get buy it the, like that, to me, where there's no and, issue. And, and when, yeah, and our and our number two top selling feeders right now are is our Spintech. I believe it's on our website as our. It was last year was a 450 pound feeder. It's now we've moved it up the hopper capacity. It now holds 500 pounds of corn. Wow. Um, that's our number two seller, and our number three seller is our thousand pound low profile ground feeder. I believe it. I now, believe. It. If someone were to buy a 500 or thousand pound feeder do you guys uh deliver that for them or 
What do you? How, how we, do you? We do have we do have ways. A lot of the ranches, when they do call and they do order the feeders, will they, of course it would bulk, and we try and accommodate. We have trucks that will make deliveries. We have a setup crew for them. If you're an individual customer as well, mm-hmm. if you're in Dallas, if you're somewhere close, if you buy two feeders or three feeders, and we see it a honey show, and we run out and you want them, we work something out with y'all. Um, especially at the Texas Trophy Hunter Show, at every show that we go to, we look we look like a traveling circus because we <laughs> take so much product. We we take so much product with us; it's unreal. We try and take care of our hunters because when they know the brand, they go to buy. Mm-hmm. They're there. Okay, you got this feeder, and we do have, of course, freight. Um, our freight um, rates are very competitive. I like to pride myself on. We have worked very hard with our shipping company on, on getting, you know, a decent rate. So there's several different ways that we can get these feeders out. Our 55 gallon barrel feeder, it, it does come in 14 foot solid legs, but we also have a sectional unit where the legs are in two sections and they go on, they go on a pallet and we can ship that feeder as well. Okay. I'm just curious. Uh, do you guys put any kind of special paint on, on these feeders or they're sitting out there in the elements, you know, year after year in the, in the summer again, and down here and all again, this. Again, like... it all goes back. You have to go back and look and, and, and go back to the basics. Like I say, uh-huh. how many times have you been out there and you built your own feeder? How many times yeah. have you painted your own? You know what I mean? Right. You, you got to look at all that, and then you got to apply what we've learned as hunters. And yes, there is a special process that we use. Okay. Okay. <laughs> my average feeder, my average crank up feeder, and this is because my feeders that, that I have owned, mm-hmm. I've gotten twenty years out of one feeder. Oh wow! Nice. That's nice. Twenty that is, years that is out impressive. of one crank up feeder. I mean, That's twenty cool. years. You're talking from at the point of the 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 winch, the barrel, the motor, the timer, mm-hmm. 20 years because our maintenance on our feeders is very, very low and very wow. easy to maintain. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, I mean, that's a heck of an investment. Amortizing that cost out over 20 years, that's <laughs> basically free. If you think. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, and I'm not trying, and that's not the sales guy I mean talking. No. I'm, I'm talking to you all as a, as a hunter, as a sure. hunter. Absolutely. As a perspective from a hunter. I mean, that's the problem nowadays. You don't, there's not enough people out there, people that are in the industry. There's a reason why we've been along because we think of that everyday guy. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, and, and, and I pride myself on that. You, you can go to our Facebook page. You can go to our website. You can go to our Instagram. Any of our social medias are here. Any person, when they come up to you and they say how happy they're with, with the feeder. What mm-hmm. we like to say is what we've heard from our competitors. Well, yeah, you think y'all are great. Your feeders are wonderful, but you know what? That's where y'all messed up because you sell them one feeder and then they don't need another feeder in 15 years. And I'm like, you know what? You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I won't get them back, but I'll get the brother. I'll get right. I'll get the nephew. I'll get the brother-in-law. Well, that's that's, that's so that's so true, Freddie. And and that's something that uh, I I think you know Feed Bandit and and, and you know, we we really relate with you guys because that's. You know, we're we're out there trying to help. You know, help help the you know the entrepreneurs try to try to get this stuff to to the everyday Joe. You know, the the guy who's got the lease, the guy who you know. I'll, I'll be really honest with you. Maybe he he comes out. He comes out dove hunting. You know, and he fills up his corn feeder, and he expects you know for at least that you know maybe he's a bow hunter and he, he expects to mm-hmm. to get in that blind on October first, and and he wants corn on the ground at seven a.m. and doesn't want any problems. Uh, so, exactly. so, so having a, a reliable company make a reliable product, uh, boy, there's a novel concept. I think it's fantastic. I love it. Well, you know, and I think the most greatest flatter we've had is because, and unfortunately, we have had people that try to knock off our product, and that's just ended up because they've done patent infringement, and we've ended up in court. And it's like I tell everybody, when you make something good, that's the greatest flatter there is. I mean, mm-hmm. sure. You really can't, you know, and, and we're doing something right. You know, just right. look at our feeder line. And it's like I tell everybody, and, I, and I'll tell every customer that comes in to talk to me, our retail center, uh, I, the girlfriends and the wives hate, hate, hate their husbands and boyfriends to come in. Because when you come in, it's like you're at home. It's like it's a hunter's paradise. There's mm-hmm. so much stuff all over the place. And you're like, you're getting overwhelmed. <laughs> right. Right. I and, love it. And, and, and 
you can come by the retail center during hunting season or two weeks before hunting season. The hunters start to come over. Everybody starts to mingle. The stories come out about last year and how oh, you missed that. No, you did. I love it. And just, I love it. We have a wall That's full awesome. of all our trophy deer. It, it's it's nice. it's an amazing place. And it's like for me, I've just enjoyed hunting and fishing all my life. Um, I was very fortunate to do that with my grandfather and my father. Awesome. And it's like I never work a day in my life. Yeah. Right. Good for right. you, That's man. It's a very enviable, enviable position to be in. Uh, no sure. doubt. No <laughs> doubt. Now, that center you're talking about, that's the uh, Spintech Hunter's Depot. Is that right? That I see on the yes, website sir. here? Sure it's is. at uh, Correct. Correct. 1730 South Le- Southeast Loop 410. Correct. Okay. Yes, sir. Cool. Yeah, next time we're down there, we'll have to, we'll have to stop by. <laughs> I was going to say. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, if, if, like I tell everybody, you love our feeders. We're cha- we're not only changing it with the inverted uh, inverted motor and the inverted mechanism. Last year was the first year we just introduced our premium blinds. Okay. You think we did something with feeders? Everybody, we we get so many raves about the new Spintech blind that came out last year. People are still buying. They're okay. they're still. I can't hold them. I can't hold them in stock. They're bought when they come in. Is this the? Um, uh... The five by five blind, five foot stand. Yes, it's on the website. Sure, it, it's yes, it's a five by five on a five foot. Then we have a five by five on an eight foot stand. Okay. Um, the lovely thing about our blinds is you, you can see the structure of it. They're just not walls put together. No, they're reinforced inside like a shark cage. Then you have insulation. Then you have a metal on the outside, wood on the inside, shelves, shooting rails. They're carpeted inside and out, uh, car, inside out, sort of carpet on the inside, and they're comfortable. You know, I was looking. I was just looking at that actually, and 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 the shelves, I I think are are huge. But you know, one one of the things Jimmy and I and, and kind of the feed banded in general is really trying to that we we're, we're passionate about is trying to get the kids involved. You know, and yes. and the reason why I think having having shelves are so important in all of your blinds is for if you're a right hand shooter is having that right arm up there on that shelf. Uh, you know, that to, exactly to, right. yeah. to to give you a good steady shot because, I mean, obviously, you know, one on that first shot, the, the very first one that you ever take as a kid, that can, you know, that could potentially make or break you. So to have a good steady, right. a, a good steady arm like or a, 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 a position like that is is absolutely crucial. So so kudos on on putting the shelves in there because I know that there are uh, quite a few out there that you've got to you've got to ask for. Uh, so yeah, and well, and the thing that you just mentioned, the youth hunting is so important to us because of how we were brought up and being able to do that with our grandfathers and our fathers. And we, we, when we went into the design of the blind, we tested those blinds out in the, out in the field for 13 years. Okay. And we did. We would take our nephews out there and, and we would take w- to make sure it was comfortable. Not only it was comfortable, two people could fit in there comfortably. But what were the necessities that you would probably need? Those shoot, you know what I mean? And where it was sealed oh, yeah. up and you weren't freezing in the morning, mm-hmm. where right. it was comfortable to hunt in the, in the Texas heat. <laughs> yeah. And they're, they're good blinds. And if you, I don't have a picture of it on our website, but if you go to our Facebook page, Spintech San Antonio, SpintechSpreaders.com, or Spintech Spreaders, I don't know, we're, we're all over Facebook. Okay. You will see the one blind. Because we have, again, like you just mentioned, the youth, we took it one step further. Everybody makes them, but do they make them right? right. Well, hopefully we'll see. We're launching in our new fiberglass blinds that are coming out in, in the fall as well. Awesome. Those are four by six blinds on a five-foot stand. Um, again, we've made them more enough with enough room and making them durable. I'm happy with all the changes that are going on with Spintech right now. Outstanding. Well, that's great. So that one, uh, can you speak to again real quick on that uh, foam insulation? So that does that tend to help with uh, retaining the heat in the winter, and how does it help in the you know? Well, it has. October I don't know if, if we're November. using. <laughs> yeah, we're using almost. It's like a spray. I don't know if it's a spray. How to describe it? But it's sprayed in between the walls, okay. and what it seems to be doing is it 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 helps because you're noticing that the blind itself, the big five by five blinds, I'm telling you what, man, when the sun is beating down on that blind, 
mm-hmm. and it's 80 degrees, you're still comfortable. You're not okay. burning up. And when That's you have great. the premium sliding windows on that blind and they're sealed up all the way, that door is able to close tightly. you got a window on that door, and when it starts raining, you don't have nothing to worry about. Because the worst thing is, is, is to be in a blind and you got all these holes and you're getting wet and you're getting right. miserable. That's the truth. That's the yeah. truth. Yeah, there's nothing like sitting in a blind when it's 80 or even 90 degrees and uh, it's like a hot box. Where, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. You, you literally, you're down to a t-shirt and sweating. And <laughs> yeah. Anything helps. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Everything helps. I think everything helps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Freddie, tell me about uh, so- something that I'm I'm actually interested in. I have not have not begun my, my shopping Um uh, t- tell me about fish feeders. Um, I, again, kind of with the the shorty feeders, they become fish feeders have become real popular. Um, do you guys have one? And and, and they, well, once again, kind of what makes yours uh, unique? Well, I'm glad you asked that. Uh, the fish feeders, yes, we did have one for a while. Um, we actually we sold out of it. It was it was you could fill it from the ground. Okay. It was decent, but it wasn't it was too short. But we also have looked at stuff and talking to our engineers and stuff. And with us just out in the field, we decided to revamp and redo that fish feeder. And I think that new fish feeder will be coming out this year as well. Oh, wow. And that's been a, that product has also been about three years in the testing market, in the testing field. And I think I'm real happy with that. I mean, so we're good. Like I said, we're a lot of things is ha- are, are happening with Spintech right now. Um, and I'm very happy from our, but the, just like our feeders, we make our feeders affordable. We you, make them affordable for every guy. Well, you know what, you know, what's funny is that I was, and that was, I was actually in a comment on that earlier. And you know, I, I kind of, kind of like Santa Claus keeps up with the uh, toy market. Uh, I, I really t- tend to keep up with the feeder and blind market and, you know, looking at, you know, the, the innovation and the, the technology that you guys have. Uh, with with the with, with the the spinning device, um, and then looking at the prices that you guys are charging, I I I I think it's I think it's great. Um, you know, you're 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 making something for you know the the you know the working man, you know the guy who can't be out there every single weekend. Uh, you're taking care of, uh, of of his or her needs, and you know they can have confidence that when the, when they leave on Sunday and start that miserable trip home, you know that their feeder is going to be what it is. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think it's great, man. Kudos. You you guys, I want you to keep keep your eye out. One thing that I haven't mentioned that I want to bring up is the new is the new game master in Spintech electric hand seeder. Uh-huh. Um, I think y'all are familiar with uh, you know those hand crank seeders that are fertilizer that you'd go buy at the hardware store and yep. you crank and crank and you get that cramp in your wrist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well. We just came out with the technology. It's been out for about two years. We're pushing it really hard this year. We have the electric hand seeder. Same concept. The only thing is you put a, it comes with a rechargeable six-volt battery. You get huh. the charger. You can put 15 pounds of seed, fertilizer, whatever you need to spread, even as ha- good for those food plots, mm-hmm. and just hold the button on the side, and it comes out. You just stand and, and walk, walk and turn. Really? Oh, nice. You know, now I think that that would help. I think that would help to lead to a more even distribution of whatever you're you're putting out. I mean, would that be accurate? Correct. Correct. Yes, sir. That is correct. Outstanding. I like it. Very yeah. cool. Very cool. Are there are there any other uh, products coming out of the R and D department that you you're allo- allowed to talk I, well, about yet? Right. Or <laughs> right. the only thing is, I can say is. I think we're revolutionizing so many things right now. Keep your eye out for uh, and our timers. That's all I can say. Mm-hmm. Okay. Perfect. All right. Awesome. Well, uh, there's what what other uh, category on your website? I saw that you have you guys have some uh, grills and some coolers and some boots. Are those? Uh, t- what can you tell us about all that that those products? <clears throat> Again, we, we, we look at every product and we uh-huh. evaluate it and we evaluate the market. If you look at our fire pits, our fire pits are unbelievably what, how they're made and how, how um, sturdy they are and heavy duty they are for the dollar again. I mean, we have a lot of people that always come in 
and say, that's a good fire pit, and then they'll go tell their brother, and their brother's coming back, and our products are very well made. Our snake boots have been tested. All the pro staff, we all wear them. They're Rocky snake boots, and they, they do very well. I mean, we've had guys, you know, we used to wear Chippewas, and we used to wear all these other brands. But the Rocky snake boot, again, it's for the everyday man. It won't break your pocket, but you're still getting the same quality, and it's a good boot. And it's an insulated boot as well. Okay, nice. Yeah, my uh, my brother in law actually <clears throat> wears uh, wears the Rocky and absolutely swears by it. He loves it. I have three pair. Are you kidding me? Every time I get a new <laughs> model in, I have I think I have one at the ranch, one in my closet, one in the back of my truck. My fiance says, "Why do you have your snake boots in your truck?" <laughs> I said, "Cause I don't know when I'm ever going to get into a puddle or have to put a grab them, and they're the easiest things to slip on." <laughs> right. Wow. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, Richard, you know, you're a big bird guy. Uh, they got a couple bird feeders, too. Yeah, I, oh, I, Richard, saw, you I would, saw that. You would love that bird feeder. That bird feeder is a 15-pound heavy-duty bird feeder. The, the women love them. Um, they're good Christmas presents. They're good for your ranch. And it's just, if you are if you love to watch birds. I do. That's a, that's a gravity feeder, and it's, it's, it's a really good, well-made feeder. Okay, very cool. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. I'll have to check it out. You know, I I love the fact that it's pink, too. It, it, so I've got, um, which has been well-documented on Feedband, I've got two little girls, a 7-year-old and a 3-year-old. And So uh, I typically wear red, but if I wasn't wearing red, I'd be wearing pink. So uh, I, I I do love the, the pink bird beer. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, we have a pink and a blue one, and then we also have a green one. And, and like I said, it's one of those things that does very well, and it doesn't break the pocket up. Well, sure. It's compared been compared to some of my other competitors out there. When you go to to a hunting a hunting show and you'll see us out there and you see our bird feeder for what we sell them for, and then you see the competitors selling theirs for three times theirs, and they kind of get upset because all they see walking around in the crowd are spin tech blue, pink, and green bird feeders all day. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's funny. Well, great. Uh, is there anything else, uh, Freddie, that you'd want to tell our listeners about uh, why we got you on the, the call? Yeah, I just wanted to say um, please keep an eye on our website and just let you guys know our new website will be up. At, uh, the old one you're looking at now, the new one will be up in another four weeks. Really excited about that. Our website's constantly changing every two years. It's like a car. If you're not evolving and changing your site, <laughs> Right. <laughs> um, everybody go to, to our Facebook and our social media and you can find us. We do have a lot of specials from time to time that you'll find on social media and on Facebook that you won't find anywhere else. And those are unbelievable pricing. If you think the pricing is good now, Richard, you should check out our Facebook because sometimes there'll be ads on there. You can get a steal. I, I, love mean, it. I think for Christmas, we were selling blinds for 15 and $1,900. Yeah, that, 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 wow. that didn't happen. You, you, you couldn't make something. You couldn't make something uh, for, for, for that price and, and to be comfortable. So, that's, yeah, that's if we had a two for one. I think we had a we had a two for one on our new Spintech inverted three hundred pound ground feeder. I mean, it was we do crazy things. I love it. That's awesome. That is awesome. You awesome. guys just thank you, thank you for the time, and I really appreciate being able to talk to you, gentlemen. Hopefully, get to meet y'all in the future. Everybody just watch our site, spintechspreaders.com or spintechfeeders.com. If there's any questions, feel free to send an email or a comment on the website. And I'm, I'm, I can, you can get a hold of me. You want to talk to me about something, it may take me a little bit, but I, I return all calls and all emails. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. Uh, I know we had a great time talking with you. I, and I, I always learn a lot, and I learned a lot from this one. I, it's a, it was a real pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. You have a good evening. Thanks, okay, Freddy. you too. All right, folks. That was Freddie Estrada with SpinTech Outdoor Products. Uh, you can find him in uh, SpinTech over at SpinTechFeeders.com. Their Facebook page is at SpinTechFeeders. And you heard him saying uh, they're coming out with a new website here shortly, so be on the lookout for that. A uh, lot of lot of cool products out there. Would you would you agree with that, Richard? Oh, absolutely. And they they seem to really have 
seemed to have really, you know, something for everybody, you know, as far as, you know, do you like the, the crank up, you know, and, and honestly, the, talking about the crank up real quick, I, I'm stunned at, at the innovation, the, the thinking that's gone into that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, something that I didn't ask him about is the fact that that thing's got the legs on there. And I was wondering, what are those legs for? Well, I realized that the legs are there so that when you put the, when you put the feeder down on the ground, it doesn't, it doesn't rest on the box. Right, you know, right. Uh, which I again I, I think is absolutely genius. Ne- never would have thought of that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, the other thing is it's probably going to uh, it's also going to make it a lot more stable when you're filling up. I, mean, I remember, and you probably remember, when we were filling up those big drums, and that thing will kind of swirl around, you know, as you're trying to trying to get it full, and that that puts a lot of you know stress on your cable and stuff. So, um, I, I I really like the idea of. You know, a company run by hunters. You know, that's that's uh, that's making products for hunters, and I, I think that happens at a lot of places. But you know, this group really seems to be, um, you know, really really seems to to have their their stuff in order. Seems to be really thinking, and I I think it's great. Yep. When you when you know your market and you tap into the the pain points, you know, and if you're a hunter, then not, then you probably know your market and. If you can solve those pain points, then you probably come up with a pretty good product. So, yep, I think that's what we're seeing here uh, tonight. So, yep, yeah, that was good fun. Job. That was uh, that was interesting. I I learned a lot. Um, as did I, my friend. Yeah. As did I. Uh, you have anything else before we sign off? I think that's it. All right. Well, awesome. Uh, again, uh, folks, uh, we want to thank uh, Freddie Estrada for coming on and talking to us about Spin Tech. Uh, really appreciate his time. And uh, you go on, go on over to spintechfeeders.com and go on to their, if you haven't already, liked their Facebook page at Spintech Feeders. Uh, go on there, like them, and you'll get notified of some of those deals that he was talking about. Uh, heck, those are some pretty good deals over Christmas. So you know, yeah. <laughs> be yeah. sure you get on their page to make sure that uh, you get notified of that uh, all through the year and, and this coming Christmas. You never know. Yep. All right, folks. Well, thank you for listening to this episode of the Feed Bandit Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot like we did. Uh, Be sure to check in next time. We'll we'll have uh, another interesting topic, uh, interview. And, uh, yeah, that's it. We will uh, see you all later. Have a good one. Thanks for listening to the Feed Bandit Podcast. If you want to find new and innovative hunting gear and service providers not typically offered through the traditional big box hunting stores, come on over and join the hunt at feedbandit.com slash join. When you join, as a bonus, you'll get our entertaining free e-guide of unique hunting tips and tricks. And a reminder to all you small businesses, feed stores, gear inventors, or entrepreneurs in the hunting space. If you'd like to get more exposure to potential customers by being featured on the Feed Bandit podcast, please let us know. We'd love to discuss what we can do for you and your business. Go to feedbandit.com slash promote. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give us a rating and review on iTunes as it would really help us out. Go to feedbandit.com slash iTunes. Thanks everyone for listening. Until next time. Please remember to support your local feed store.